Good afternoon, Massachusetts Attorney General Martha Coakley. Today, state police assigned to the Attorney General's office affected the arrest of Annie Ducan, a former chemist who worked at the Department of Public Health's Jamaica Plain Hinton Laboratory. She is charged today with two counts of obstruction of justice and one count of falsifying, falsely pretending to hold a degree from a college or university. She was arrested without incident shortly before noon today, and we expect that she will be arraigned before the Boston Municipal Court this afternoon. Annie Ducan's alleged actions corrupted the integrity of the entire criminal justice system. And there are many victims as a result of this. First, of course, are the defendants who, when charged in a criminal justice system, have the right to expect that they will be given due process and that there will be fair and accurate information used in any prosecution against them. There are also, of course, the victims of public safety and the public trust in the system. They have also been victimized because the public expects and deserves to have a criminal justice system on which they can rely for the same kind of accuracy and fairness. I've spent my career, most of my career, working in that system. I believe in a criminal justice system where both victims and defendants will be treated fairly, as fairly as we can. And I'm committed to working with all the parties who have a stake in this to make sure that we fix this. We know that everybody who has a stake in the outcome of this has to work together to fix this problem. Today, we have been doing that. Today's arrest is one step further towards making sure that there is accountability for this corruption of the system. As always, facts do matter. And as this investigation is ongoing, the criminal investigation is still ongoing, our goal is to get to the bottom of what happened, to determine as best we can and as thoroughly as we can why this chemist did this, as we believe, and for, for so long. Our office has also taken and will continue to take tangible steps to fix the problem going forward. The first piece of that was as soon as we began this investigation with the state police to get information as soon as we uncovered the scope of what this problem was, turn it over to prosecutors and others to begin to rectify, to undo and to try and mediate the damage that has been done to defendants who were convicted with evidence that was not accurate. We will continue to do that, to turn over evidence that we believe needs to be given to prosecutors and defense lawyers so that we can maintain as much fairness as possible going forward. The second piece we're continuing to do is to work with other stakeholders to determine to what extent any of the other lab results coming out of that laboratory uh, are affected to what extent they may or may not be reliable. And we also need to get those facts and get to the bottom of that problem to restore trust for everybody in the system. Uh, people absolutely deserve a system they can trust. And it obviously protects those immediately involved with the system, uh, prosecutors, victims, defendants. But beyond that, we realized and we saw how this affected the perception of public trust and the public safety that this kind of action affects the whole system. Repairing that trust is going to take time and it's going to be a complicated project. There's no question that it has to be done. I'm committed to that. Our office is committed to it. And I think that you can see by the level of cooperation from everybody, defense counsel, the courts, the administration, that we have to get to the bottom of this, and we will. Again, I think it will be a long and complicated road, um, but we will get there. 